there's something to it. We never got involved in abductions. Were there reports of abductions back then? Yeah, but we never got involved because our main, our main uh, approach was hardware. Even the body functions were in our approach. Of course, we got into the brain and some of the muscles because one of our approaches was can man travel in space? Right here. We found out he can't. We started radiated food because of this, the back door. And no food, and our astronauts would need food. I ate a steak. Trudeau and I went to uh, the quartermaster, and uh, they served us a steak that had been on the shelf for two years without refrigeration in those days. This it worked pretty well. But uh, the, uh, the AEC or the nuclear people that scare the daylights out of you held it back. And uh, also, there's evidence every time we try to move a nuclear thing out in space or something, something happens to the carrier. Or... I, l I list all that in my writings. I won't... There, there was something that you mentioned um, about a... Uh, now, you're talking about uh, nuclear bursts in space. And... And there was two items. Let me tell you what they were. Okay. One of these I made public. Maybe I shouldn't have said, but... Uh, the Russians exploded their monster bomb in the Pacific. Where in the Pacific? They in, in actually Siberia, but it knocked out all our communication in the Pacific. At the time, the newspapers wrote up as 100 megaton. It wasn't. It was 60. Big enough. Knocked all our communication out. Now the other one was. I had access to one of my clearances. Or maybe you, I don't know if you know about this. There's a special intelligence group at the Pentagon where when you go in that room and it's covered around, that you can't take notes or write. They put the papers on the desk. Mm -hmm. You look at them and that's it. Right. Well, I, since I had a type of photographic mind, I could remember things. So one day, uh, one of the colonels was in charge of the area, there was a brigadier general there, walked past me and I caught him by the arm and said, hey, when are you going to brief my boss? Mm, the satellites that they've knocked, the Russians have knocked out. He said, what are you talking about? I told him, it's here, it's in here. And he got a little bit alarmed. But what time frame was this? Now? Kind of this was 19, I was with Trudeau then, 1960. 60, okay. So, uh, 61, 60, 61. So, about a half an hour later, the general in charge calls me, and he was an old friend of mine. I told him, General, you know me, I'm not here to cause you trouble. But. If you don't brief him, you should brief my boss. You're in charge. I shouldn't brief him. You should do it. Because that's your job. Coming from you is better than coming from me. Oh, Trudeau would believe me, but you have all the data and all the facts and it's in your files. And it's there. He said, well, I believe you. So they call me back about three or four days later. He said, we're ready to go. Good. I'll fix up a conference with the general. What the Russians did, they fired an atomic shot in the air, one of our satellites. But they missed it by 250 miles. The satellite was out here in Edwinbury. And I had some powerful friends like John McCormick and Eastland and Dirksen, Nolan. You remember him? All right, what was your service number? 0104-7930. You went in, you said, and you went straight to OCS? And no, you were drafted to... no, I was drafted. I went to, uh, after basic training, I went to Edgewood Arsenal, and there they sent me to the anti-aircraft school in South Carolina, or North Carolina. I went to the anti-aircraft school and became second lieutenant. Came back, they sent me to Camp Ritchie. I took, I, I went to, I joined the 9 minute battalion. They sent me to Camp Ritchie. In Camp Ritchie, they picked me up, gave me an interrogation team, and sent me to England which is a good thing. As soon as I got to England, the headquarters didn't know what to do with us. So they gave me to the British, which was one of the best things that ever happened to me. So your, your branch was artillery? Artillery, yeah. Okay. Condolences. Mm -hmm. I'm infantry. Oh, that's right. <laughs> so, and uh, I, got, I went through the landings and everything in Italy. You know? I went through two landings, Andio and Salerno, and I was in North Africa. 
so the British, uh, I, I was very fortunate that that tour with the British. Uh, I got some good training there because they were the experts in those days. They used to call us and say, how, how green is our ally? <laughs> And then later, though, they said, damn, they learned fast, though. They said, one general told them, Brigadier General, he said, you've made so many innovations now that they said, that, well, the Whig is stuck with tradition. Yeah. They don't do it. Was there any indication that the Russians had uh, access to any yeah. UF UFO type stuff? They tried to, they, Stalin gave order to collect everything from Roswell. They believe that. What, what about any anything that might have occurred inside the uh, Soviet Union? Anything like they had a crash or there was something else, or were they just after ours? Well, there were some crashes there that they claimed, but we never had much information on them. CIA was not in the business of collecting that information. They didn't give it down. The incident at the, at the missile base. What? The, the missile base that was basically wiped out. Well, we knew about it wiped out. They didn't announce it until after about three or four months after we knew it. The generals and all, the technicians killed, and wiped out. Did we and feel it, that it, they provoked it somehow? Yeah, it was very mysterious the way it all happened. How, how did that happen? We don't we don't know for sure, but it was a mysterious thing. It wasn't just one of their missiles blew never, up on the no, path. No, they never gave any explanation. And uh, we were all suspicious. Was well, there something we could ask about now? We could. Oh, I wish we would. We, we just haven't? Or? We haven't. We didn't even ask him if... I want, uh, when I sent this friend of mine over, I asked him to ask him about USO, UFO material. The KGB general. The KGB general says, I know exactly what you want. He just asked him the question. He said, but uh, he said, you want me killed? He said, they'll kill me immediately. He said, there's a special group that that's in charge that has all that information. Were there similar incidents uh, on our side where missile bases were, were messed with? I mean, did it? Or no, the flash. Maybe thing, not uh, blown out. But uh, the, the thing is, uh, the deadliest one that I think was when the UFOs were seen over, what was it, where the uh, control was of the uh, underground silos? All the guidance systems went out at one time. This is U.S. now. Yeah, and UFOs were over the area. Ours, our guidance systems went out. We couldn't fire a missile. When, when was that? Oh, I forget what year it was. I have it in my writing someplace. I don't know the year now anymore. It was in the late 50s, I think. Do you think there's an organized uh, group in the present time that's tracking this? I wish there was, but I don't think so. Hmm. You take your reputation in your hands. Wilbur so, Smith warned us about that. Don't, don't try to explain anything. You don't have the answers to all the questions, and they'll type you. Well, for example, you did said it to him. You didn't feel there was a cover-up, but then he also mentioned that Phil Class being paid by the CIA was he paid to do this kind of stuff? I mean, and, and if so, would when there you, be some? When you work for somebody, and you get paid. You got to. And what, what's his expertise? His expertise is uh, uh, debunking. Yeah, that's the, I told you, I get intelligence, you don't go to prove it in court. So what? Uh, actions prove, uh, and known he was paid. In fact, uh, when I testified, when I was up in front of 2020, I told the producer that a lot of newspaper men in the 50s were on CIA payroll because they didn't make much money than some of the big ones. And the producer came over and told Tom Gerald, Tom, he said, next break, ask the colonel this question about the newspaper men that were on CIA payroll. Tom, well, it was logical. In those days, they weren't making much money, and CIA was paying them. I told him, well, this was well known. And they won't even deny it, I told him. It was a, it was a well known. The newspaper men were on their payroll. They got paid. They got expenses. They sent overseas. CIA financed it. What I mean is if CIA were paying class or anyone else to debunk, and it seems like there would there really is a debunking effort of I some sort. I never got any information out of CIA on, on flying saucers. And I was at the White House. Did you ever ask? Oh, no, I never did ask. Okay. Because uh, I was told by friends in there that no use. It's not there, and then what they got is not, not any, worth anything. So I figured, why, why bother? What could I ask them for? What could they say? We don't have any? 
And then, no, I won't get in that position. I don't have to. Well, we had what we wanted. We had our hands full of what we had. When I was in R&D, not at the White House. We'd like to ask for your input. Share your opinion and expertise with us in the comments after watching the video. If you're a subscriber, you'll always get a heart from us as a small thank you, and we'll pin your important post to the top where everyone will read it first. Just make sure you've already subscribed, like the video, and mention both at the beginning of your comment.